All righty. Well, hey there, Squib. This is pretty exciting. Uh, hey, a chance to chat with a friend. I know you've always been doing some awesome and incredible security research, malware analysis, all great stuff. I could sing your praises forever, but I don't know if you're willing to fill in the gaps, maybe let the audience know who you are, what you're up to. And then I think you've got something up your sleeve for some sweet show and tell, but I'll let you take it away, my friend. Sure thing. I'm known as Squibly Do, or you can just call me Squid. Uh, my main work is tracking the solar marker malware actor. I've been doing that for several years now. Also, uh, revoking his certificates and other certificates used to sign malware. That's a big hobby of mine. But part of what um, I'm here to talk about today is a tool of mine that I'm really proud about. Uh, and that's a tool that handles uh, inflated malware. And we're going to take a look at what that is and what the tool does. Sweet. Hey, I'll let you go ahead and screen share, but uh, if I may, I'll just to add some top cover. This is always a thing that I've always personally just struggled with because I know we might be able to use O Detect It Easy if you have like some ginormous 400 megabyte file that won't plop into any scanners because it's just bloated, crazy big. And I've never really, I don't know, been able to get a smart streamlined solution to cut that down into the actual malware that matters for analysis. Uh, so I'm looking forward to whatever you've got to showcase. I haven't got a chance to play with it, so I'm excited just as well. Yeah, your experience is the same as uh, many of my fellow SOC analysts and other people I've talked to within the industry. I'm going to walk through a little bit of a scenario of what the problem is, what it might look like as a SOC analyst or as a system administrator, and then talk about the role that the tool can play. Like you said, John, a lot of the times the malware that is pretty large. One example is with phishing. Often you'll get links that link to some kind of public site where you can download, such as Google Drive or Dropbox, and the user will be directed to a zip file. Usually the zip file will be only about 1.5 megabytes in size. But this is also pretty characteristic of this inflated malware. So in this example, from a real phishing email, the attacker had attached this file, which was one gigabyte in size. Now, as you might suspect, uh, if you try putting that in any sandbox, it's going to cry. Um, if you try to upload it to VirusTotal, it's going to tell you no. And this is where my tool really comes in. Where So for example, we'll talk about the installation and uses of it here in a second, but we've got two different versions. One's a GUI and one's a command line version that we can use. So I'll go ahead and open up the GUI version just to show it off a little bit. Debloat, heck yeah. Yeah, so my intent with this originally was to make it as simple as possible. So what we can do is we can take this, drag it into this bar here, hit process file, and it's gonna do everything for us. Uh, this one's a little bit big, so it's going to take a few seconds more, but it doesn't take all that long. All right, we're done. That's it. Uh, that's the show. <laughs> yep, that's the show. Thank you. Uh, the bullet tells you a little bit about what went on. First of all, the beginning file size, 1.5 gigabytes. It reduced it by 99%, and we ended up with a 500 kilobyte file. Now that you're going to be able to put in your sandbox, you're going to be able to do your manual analysis, you're going to be able to do a lot more with it. By default, the bloat will write the new file to the same directory where you upload Uploaded it from. It'll also, right now, it'll also tell you the tactic that it identified within this. Because the bloat's able to handle 10 different tactics at this time. So let's look a little bit more about what's going on as well. John, one thing we can do is we can actually write our own bloated file. This is just a little bit fun because it helps us see a little bit of like how this technique is done. Because this is really a popular technique right now. Yeah, in my mind, I, I always wonder, is it just going to be a whole ton of null bytes that just add to the noise, garbage, and nonsense that's in there? Uh, I know you mentioned, oh, just one repeated file byte over and over and over again. Is that always a null byte or can it be others that they kind of tamper and mix with? Or I don't know if you've got any of the other techniques, but I'm super interested in what else it might be. Yeah. There's a lot of different options. There's 10 major techniques that I've seen and two that are fairly rare that uh, Diplo can't account for yet, but I'm working on integrating those functions. Uh, the most common that you see is null bytes. Mm. Uh, but attackers can also get pretty innovative with different patterns or they can try to not have a pattern at all. At all. So if we want to look at kind of what this looks like and how we can do this ourselves, um, I'm going to just open up a Python interpreter real fast, and it's, it's going to be fairly easy. So I've got a copy of Calc on the desktop. I'm just going to open that copy of Calc. What we're going to do is we're going to read the bytes. I'm going to just call the variable Calc. We're going to read those bytes. And then basically all we need to do is we're going to open a new file, and we're going to attach bytes to the end of it and write it to disk mm, yeah just all tacked on at the end <laughs> yeah 
So we'll do that real quick. All right, and we're not going to use no, we'll use please subscribe. I appreciate you. Heck yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to put it in UTF encoding because we're doing bytes. We're going to put, let's say, 7 million of them. Yeah, Python makes it easy. Just multiply it out. That's cool. All right, <laughs> here we do it. Go, we have our bloated calc. Look at the properties. Oh, that one only ended up 100 megabytes. Well, we can throw in more zeros if we want, but... Still, even over 100, things like any run. I don't know what the limit is for like Joe Sandbox or the hybrid analysis, but even what Virus Total might let you, like even that, if you didn't know what the binary was, then it's like, well, you can't press the easy button anymore. Yep, exactly. Uh, most public sandboxes have a limit of 100. Virus Total has a limit of 650. Hmm. Um, but it's fairly common that you'll get a lot of information stealers that will have 900 megabytes or like you saw up to a gigabyte or even higher than that. So it's not uncommon. Well, goodness. I know this was even just the small, simple example of, hey, a, a ton of bytes tacked on at the very end. Is there anything you might be able to, I don't know, sprinkle in and tease about those other techniques or what is more or less common? Yeah, I can do that. Also, let's look at how we can look at the file from a few different viewpoints as well. Mm. So for one example, PE bear is a good way uh, I used to look at files because without the bloat, you don't have a whole lot of options. In fact, let's talk a little bit about getting the bloat and um, those types of things as well. First of all, um, you can install the bloat just using pip. If you use pip install the bloat, uh, you can install it from the command line and then you're good to use it from there where you don't really need any uh, command line arguments. There's a few options there, but just using the default will work just fine. You can also download um, the releases here for Windows, Linux, or Mac OS. Cross-platform, very nice. Yeah, so for example, um, without the bloat, a lot of people just did this manually, but when you're looking at a lot of these inflated binaries, or if you see some of these other tactics, it becomes really difficult to manage them. So if we look at something like calc in PE bear, and we look at the section headers, um, first, we start getting something that's a little bit strange, where it kind of looks like there's an error going on here with PE bear, but this is actually normal because what this is, is all the sections are really small and you've got a giant one on the end. <laughs> uh, this makes it a little bit difficult to look at any of these inflated binaries in something like PE bear, where it just ends up being hideously abnormal like this. And part of the manual way that people will typically remove these bytes is you can open something up in a hex editor, and then you can calculate where the end of the binary should be, and then you can remove them. But that only works well with this one particular use case. But we'll look at a few other things where we can look at the structures and we can look at some of these examples. One of the tools I've been using a lot recently is Malcat. One of the reasons is I like a bit of the visualization here. Again, we can look at the file structure and we can easily pinpoint where the junk is added to this file. So in this example, we added it to the end of the file, which then puts all that information and the please subscribes in the overlay. That's a very funny visual, if I may say. <laughs> so... This is one reason I enjoy Malcat, and I use it a lot when I'm developing for the bloat, or I'm looking for examples where the bloat may have had a problem, or I find a new technique where attacker is adding junk. So I'm going to grab a few of the other tactics that I have just to show as a quick example. Ooh, yeah. Uh, so I've actually got uh, them all named tactics. 1 through 12. Uh, tactic 6, which I'm uploading, is Solar Marker. I wanted to go ahead and upload it as it's one malware I've been intentional in including as something that the bloat can handle. The Solar Marker has always been consistently 200 megabytes to 300 megabytes. Again, always over that threshold of being able to be fit in most public sandboxes. And in this tactic, they've included the junk in a resource section, where with the first tactic, you can open it in a hex editor and get rid of those bytes because they're in the overlay, which isn't critical to the executable. Like when we looked at PE bear, we actually, 
I didn't touch on this too much, but the virtual side doesn't look weird because it ignores the overlay and the overlay isn't loaded when a PE is loaded into memory. But with the solar marker instance, all that junk is in a resource section. Mm. And then we need to have a different method of, of dealing with that. So what the bloat does, which I, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and CD into that samples directory. And I'm going to debloat tactic six. What it's going to do is it's going to go through each of the PE sections, check what the entropy is by checking the comp compression ratio. It will determine where the bloat is, drop those resources when it determines that they're junk. And then we've got our final file size of 2.5 megabytes. Much better. Much better. That's super cool. Even just to get my head straight, Solar Marker, I always kind of parallel that well to like InfoStealer, the Jupiter malware InfoStealer. Is that right? Are they one in the same or am I getting confused? Uh, they are one in the same gotcha why jupiter is just a module of solar marker mm. so solar marker is has multiple modules and the infra stealer is just one component of it and cool. what that component actually does which i don't want to get too far in a tangent is it helps profile a device and the actor is going to use his other modules to commit fraud using that victim's device goodness well sorry for the tangent but i know it came to my mind and <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's a good question. It's a little bit confusing. But now we know their tactics. And hey, Dbloat can handle that. So that's super cool. Yeah. Uh, so it's got a number of different tactics it can handle as well. One of the other tactics that is a little bit tricky is when attackers use something like a, a Nullsoft installer in order to take a bloated file, put it in an installer, and then drop the Nullsoft installer. I have seen that, yeah. So that's something I wanted to make sure Debloat was able to handle too. So again, in this instance, we can upload it into Malcat. We can see again that the junk is in this resource section, but we also see within the metadata, this is actually... It's not built within a setup. This was actually some strings that they appended to the end of it. <laughs> um, it ends up being a Nullsoft installer. Wow. So if we go back again to the, our command line, the blow, this is tactic five. What the bloat will do is it will go ahead and extract that Nullsoft installer. So then it'll dump all those files to disk so you don't have to struggle with it. You can actually open Nullsoft installers with 7-zip, but Deblo go ahead and takes care of that tactic for you. It'll also print to the file directory um, the setup instructions for the Nullsoft installer, so you're able to inspect those as well. So in this case, the attacker has put two different files that are rather large into the, this one Nullsoft installer. Presumably, it was set to execute one of them when it executed. Let's debloat that file too. This ended up in a directory named Tactic5 patched. All right, we'll go into one of these subdirectories. Go ahead and debloat that file. Uh, this was also bloat in the PE resources. And there we've got a 3.3 megabyte file that we can now analyze however we want. That is awesome. Are there any, and I don't know, I don't mean to be, I don't know, apples to apples or oranges here, but when you get to see this in comparison with a tool like Detected Easy or some of the others, I'm sure there are many of the tactics that you've covered that they just haven't quite yet. Or, I don't know, things that just get a little bit more complex or complicated. Yeah, you might be familiar with something that I'm not. I'm not aware of Detected Easy being able to do much with these other than mm. tell me the file type. Gotcha. Um, the other tools that I'm aware of, um, a lot of people had used PE check for a long time. It really only handled samples that had null bytes. And right. part of this was it would it would basically carve out the PE file and then drop everything else. But there were some situations where PE check could throw up and give you a file that's twice as large. <laughs> One of the other popular options was also a forensics tool that was normally used for carving PEs out of disk image. But again, that really only works with null bytes. One yeah. other tool I'm aware of is binary refinery. And the complexity there is that you need to really understand what the tactic is you're looking at, and you need to know the command line so syntax. It's funny you mentioned binary refinery, if I may, because I wanted to record a video on that because it kind of puts itself out there to be, oh, a cyber chef for the command line where you could do whatever you wanted to with some file material and contents. But the syntax and like the learning curve for that is not nothing. It's not to say that it's ginormous and egregious, but you still kind of need to figure it out and know what you're doing. So even for the video, I opted to go for like Sheppy or another command line. Oh, syntactic little playground for cyber chef.
just because I remember looking at binary refinery and thinking like, I just want the easy button, but it looks like this is awesome. D bloat is a thousand percent. the. Yeah. Uh, I had intentionally wanted it to be that way because when my other SOC analysts were dealing with these bloated files, I didn't want them to have the literacy that they needed to remove those junk bytes. I needed them to be able to throw it in a sandbox, get some IOCs, and then be able to run with that. Well, hey, that's awesome. Kudos to you. Thank you. This is great to see. May I ask, are the tactics that you've included, at least kind of here for the demo, are they also available in the GitHub repository? Can folks tinker and play with those as well? Or are they like live malware samples? <laughs> All of these are live malware samples. I'm able to share them. If someone wants to tinker with them, I'm happy to make those easily available. I have a copy of them where they're all defanged. This is awesome. Is there more to showcase? Is there more to discuss? Or I don't know, how else might anyone be able to get to know what you're up to next? If there's another project or you're still chipping away at, hey, some more of those tactics and some more techniques for Dblow. If they want to keep up with Dblow and find out about more tactics I'm working on, I've got a Discord server. You can f find that through my Twitter uh, profile. There, I'm often talking out loud about the problems I'm facing with these different tactics, also solutions that I have or temporary workarounds or how we can solve those problems. So that's definitely a good place if someone wants to contribute. Otherwise, I'm pretty active within a number of Discord servers um, within Twitter and Mastodon. So those are the great places to find me. I've also got a blog at squibblydo.blog. You'll get lots of posts about solar marker and certificate abuse through there. Well, hey, you're always putting out some incredible stuff. And I was super duper flattered when you reached out and said, hey, you know what? Hey, we could showcase uh, and really, I don't know, bring to light Dblow. But this is phenomenal. I know I'm absolutely adding it to my toolkit. Hey, I want to share it with some of the other folks that I know are doing a lot of that SOC work, security operations and malware analysis. So genuinely, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yes, you're very welcome. All righty. Sounds like we'll tune out, but hey, let us know. I don't know, comments, feedback, whatever you'd like. If you'd like to see any more sweet stuff, any other magic tricks that Squibbly and Squib might be up to, uh, we'll have to get together again sometime. <laughs> Sounds good.